Well, we're just arriving at the Lennox and Addington dark sky viewing area. I'm really looking forward to this. We had a couple of great days on Amherst Island and Wolf Island. The first time I came here was four or five years ago and there wasn't very much here. Things have really been improved over the time. This wall is a recent addition. Apparently the solar panels are up and everything is running now. I might get back there again this week, but I'm not sure. But like I say, it's so much nicer than it was. When I got here first, there was a pl platform was there and there was a parking lot, but that's all there was. Now there's this wall to block off the car lights and this is the sign has been improved as well. You just come along here, go around. Come on in here past the wall. When I got here today, the wall wasn't finished yet. All this steel on the inside here was put up today. The fellas worked really hard and put that all together. But now this is where the magic happens. This platform has also been expanded to have more room. It's so much nicer now. The crow points due north, so the Polaris, the North Star, is going to be in that direction. That'll help you set up your tracker here. Because most people, I have to see Polaris to be able to set up my star tracker. It's going to be a great evening tonight. You can see some of the shots from here. This is a great story about Terence Dickinson. When he moved here and set up this area, he thought it would be a great place. He knew it would be a great place to view the stars. And it certainly is. Here's a little write-up about him. 1976 astronomer and author. There's my van parked up there. We spent two nights there. Here's Tim and Joe setting up the new telescope. This is a phenomenal thing. They call it the light bucket. It's a huge telescope, and it really pulls in the stars. There's Tim with his scope getting lined up. I think he was setting it up on Venus, if I remember correctly. He's setting up the scope to track so that everybody can take a peek through there. And there it is, there's the planet, wow. Tim's been doing this for nine or ten years, he really knows his stuff. Here Joe is letting some people look through the big telescope here at things. Everybody's set up here, it's, it's fantastic, a great group of people, I had a wonderful time here. I always have, I've learned so much about the sky by coming here. At first, all I knew was to point my camera at the North Star and get a bunch of shots. Tim setting things up here. I just like the light coming through, his headlight coming through onto the weights of his telescope. I thought it made a pretty interesting image. This is how I set up my camera. I've got my Olympus OM-1 mounted on the tracker. This is the Ioptron tracker. And we use the pole star to line it up. I'll show you later. There's an app for your phone where you find out where you have to put the pole star on the reticle in here. So you set this about 45 degrees for where I am. That's our latitude here is about 45. So that gives you an idea when you point it at north, you're getting close. So you sight through there and you get the pole star on the right spot. You're set up. If it's cold out, you're gonna need to use a heater on the lens like this. So you wrap this strap around the lens and you connect this up to your a USB battery pack that you can mount on the leg of your tripod. That keeps the lens from misting over while you're shooting. I set the camera on B and I'm using this remote control with an intervalometer so that I can control my exposure. So you have to set that up. And the way I have it set up, I've got a 10 second delay programmed in. I have a two minute exposure time. I've got a 10 second wait, and I have it set for 199 shots. So once I hit the play button, 
It'll start playing that program. It'll wait 10 seconds. It'll take the first picture, two, two minutes. Then it'll wait 10 seconds and go on to the next one until it takes 199 shots. This is the app on my phone that shows me how to set up Polaris on the reticle. That's what it looks like on the phone, but it's went 12 at the top and you put pole star right on the bright spot. These are just some random shots that I did, checking to make sure that I was tracking correctly. This is way out of whack here. I was getting like star streaks. Now we're getting zeroed in on things. This is the North American Nebula. Tim pointed this out to me and I sat up and tracked. I got 88 or 100 pictures of this. Mary stacked them together and then made different uh, variations on the stacked images. Now we're looking for M81 and M82. Joe is helping me right now to try and find. There they are. We're getting into... I, I zoomed out to 40 millimeters on my 40 to 150. Then I zoomed it into 150 to bring it in a little closer. There, we're getting in there now. That's what we want to photograph. And I don't know, I shot a, a bunch of stacks on that. This is Andromeda Galaxy, a photograph that I made last October. Joe and Tim helped me set things up. This is a couple different variations on Andromeda that Mary made. This is M43 Messier, the Orion Nebula. Another variation on it there. I've had so much fun over the years. On the way home, wow, once again, this is the second time in three years that the coil's gone bad on my van coming back from the dark sky park. Or once I was going there, and now I'm coming back. I had to get towed to Canadian Tire. It would have cost $1,000 to tow me from where I was to home, so I got towed to the Canadian Tire in Huntsville on the hope that I could fix the van. I ordered a new coil. Meanwhile, I got on the internet to cheap van life people and uh, started asking them what to do and everybody had some other ideas. Everybody was super helpful and supportive. My main concern, first of all, I thought was to change the coil. I ordered a coil on Sunday. It came Monday morning at 11. So I went to work changing the coil. A good Samaritan showed up and was keeping me company and said we should check out the because there's another piece that it could have been, which was the ignition control module. So I pulled that out and we tried to get one. I wouldn't have been able to get an ignition control module for a few days, so I decided to just try it with just the coil. I knew right away as soon as I started up the engine that we had the problem solved because it just ran way smoother. And it, it had acted the same way as when the coil went bad the last time. So there's the new coil in place. It wasn't much of a job to replace that. It wouldn't have taken long. Now we're headed home. We're getting snow, rain, hail, everything. We're coming up to a hill here. And uh, well, I put the hammer down a little bit and the van just took off up the hill like it hadn't driven like that for a while. I think that coil was on the way out for a little while. And it was a good quality coil from Part Source. It was their super brand. But anyway, uh, the coil's fixed now. We're back on the road. We're getting home. We're talking about what a great time we had. You know, you have a big catastrophe like that. Well, it's not really a big catastrophe, but it's a setback. You wind up staying somewhere overnight. You didn't plan on it. You solve the problem. You get out of there. You made a few new friends on the internet and uh, a few friends in town too, and it was just great. Wonderful time.